some meat out for good measure. This is oyster. You see how this pepper has four, uh, what do you call that? I don't know what you call that. Legs? I'm gonna say four bells. <laughs> um, my friend Kelly told me that when they have four, it's a sweeter pepper. When it has three, I think all of, nope, like that one. When it has three, it won't be as sweet. But when it has four, it'll be sweeter. I'm not to the steak yet, buddy. <laughs> I'm using beef sirloin steak from our steer that we butchered this year. So I've got about probably four pounds here. <laughs> okay, so the first thing to do is to take your steak and just put it in your slow cooker. Now I already sprayed the slow cooker with some cooking spray. Just gonna put your steak in there. We have about four pounds of steak in the slow cooker. Then you're going to add about six cloves of garlic, minced garlic, four green bell peppers, and then I also have about three onions here, three to four. Small to medium sized onions. Along with that, we're gonna add about eight ounces of mushrooms. I'm just using oyster mushrooms that we froze last year. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and put in, I think I'm gonna put half of this because I think that would be about four. Eight ounces is really not as much as you think when it comes to minced mushrooms. Jake will use the rest of those in scrambled eggs or something. Now I've got three cups of beef broth here. To that, you're gonna add three tablespoons of Worcestershire, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and I'm adding a teaspoon of smoked paprika because I really like the flavor that it gives to cheese steaks. So I'm gonna throw that in there. Usually I would whisk the pepper and salt and everything in before I put the water in the broth to make the broth, but uh, I messed up today, so that's okay. Then you're gonna take that broth mixture and pour it over your meat and vegetable mixture. And then you'll give everything a good stir. I like to get everything mixed up in the beginning so that meat has a chance to get a lot of that flavor into it. All right, I think that's pretty good for now. So we're gonna take the lid, put it on, which I probably should wipe this off, it's pretty messy. Just clean it up a bit so it's not a mess later. All right, put your lid on. And I'm gonna let this simmer all day on low. If you can see that it's not getting done in time, you can switch it to high and cook it a little bit longer, but usually six to eight hours on low or three to four hours on high. Now that I got this cooking, we've got chores to do and all kinds of stuff to do today. It's Saturday, so we've got a bunch of projects to work on. So I can let this go, supper will be ready for us later, and we can go do what we gotta do.
looking good. I'm going to give it a good stir. See how it's doing. Looks like it's ready to go. It's been cooking since about 9.30 this morning. It's almost 6 now, so oh, that's quite a while. I am making mine separate because it's gluten-free. So I'm using a separate, separate bun and I've got it wrapped in foil so that I can put it on the cookie sheet away from the other buns, but this way I can, I can at least still have a Philly cheese too. So now with the buns, I like to toast them just a little bit, which I have the oven going. Um, Sometimes I like to dab them with a little bit of bacon grease because I just feel like it adds a really crispy, delicious crispiness to the sandwich. But I'm not going to tonight. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the provolone on here. Now some people just do provolone and some do provolone and cheese Whiz. I'm doing both, but I'm just gonna put provolone on right now and then we'll put the cheese Whiz on later. Now I'm gonna stick these in the oven. I've got the broiler on and I'm just gonna stick them in for a few minutes so they get a little bit toasty and that cheese starts to melt. I'm toasting these in the oven tonight, but you can also toast them in the skillet. Lightly dab the buns with bacon grease on top and just then turn it and toast it in the skillet. Um, that makes a really delicious Philly cheesesteak sandwich because that bun's just slightly crispy. Tonight, for the sake of ease, because it's been a long day, I'm going to go ahead and just toast them in the oven for a couple minutes, and then we'll throw the sandwiches together. They're ready to come out of the oven. They're quite toasty, and that cheese has melted quite nicely. So now we're going to put them together. We're going to start by spreading mayo on the part of the bun that doesn't have cheese. Then you're going to take some tongs and just put your meat mixture. I always like to shake it a little bit because it's going to be quite juicy coming out of the slow cooker. There's going to be a lot of liquid on that meat. So just kind of squeeze your tongs and shake it good before you put it on the bun. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm just gonna add a couple spoonfuls of cheese whiz to the top of that for extra cheese. And voila, your Philly cheesesteak is ready to go. I had never had a cheesesteak until I met my husband. And, uh, well, wait a minute, no, 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 I take that back. I had never had one until I went to Philadelphia for the first time in college. Mm -mm. messy and delicious and then i met and married a guy from pennsylvania who loved cheesesteaks so i had to learn how to make it you know some people will tell you that a real classic cheesecake or cheesesteak cheesecake i got cheesecake on the brain does not have peppers and i'm not sure about the onions but they will say it does not have peppers but i really like the flavor that peppers give to the meat so I put peppers in mine. You want some meat, Chuck? You want some steak? Put the mayo away. Yeah, Maybe I put it away. 